Hello to all. As we all know, technology can be used to foster learning in various ways. This includes exploring different resources on the internet, constructing your knowledge using tools such as concept maps, connecting to real world problems using simulations and game based learning or connecting to various online communities for collaboration. However, an important thing to remember here is that mere use of technology can't help in promoting effective learning. Technology works best in partnership with effective pedagogical strategies which implies that we need to consider effective integration of technology for meaningful learning. Effective integration of ICT is often interpreted as ICT function as an integral or immediated tool to accomplish specific teaching and learning activities to meet certain instructional objectives. Also, studies have suggested that effective integration of ICT is achieved when instructors design student centered active learning activities exploiting the affordances of the ICT tool. Before we get to know more on integration of technology, let us do a reflection spot. Three instructors integrated sophisticated technology into their e-learning content, however with different goals in mind. According to you, which of the following instructors seem to follow effective integration of technology? Instructor 1 says that I would like to make invisible elements processes visible for learners through the use of technology. Instructor 2 says that I would like to show multiple representations of a process using technology so that my students can explain the reason underlying the phenomenon. Whereas instructor 3 says that I would like to use more sophisticated technology in my content and would also like to cover more content through the same. Well, instructor 1 seems to focus on learning and emphasizes on making some invisible processes, elements visible to the learners with the use of technology which seems like an effective use of technology. Instructor 2 again wants to exploit the affordances of technology to make learners understand the underlying phenomenon which again is an effective use of technology. Now instructor 3 seems to have two goals here, one of which is to use more sophisticated technology in the e-content which itself does not accomplish any teaching learning objectives and thus does not seem like an effective integration of technology. However, the second point stated here is that instructor wants to cover more content which may imply enhancing efficiency by use of visualizations to demonstrate complicated molecular reactions in the cells um, which may save time, effort as well as resources. So from that perspective it may be partially correct. Thus the instructional designers are likely to use technology if they clearly see the benefits of technology over the old traditional practices of teaching. There are a different kinds of relative advantages of technology that may be considered. Here is a technology enhanced learning metrics which includes effectiveness which entails learning of content and skills. Uh, it includes accessibility which entails reaching to large numbers and diverse groups. Attractiveness which entails attracting learners by engaging them, motivating them and visual attractiveness. And efficiency as we discussed which entails saving of resources such as cost, time, uh, manpower or space. However, in this LED we will mostly focus on the relative advantage of technology in learning of content and skills. So here we will try to address three important questions. First, uh, when to use a technology tool at all? How do we decide that? The second is given that there are so many technology tools available for a particular function, how to select a good tool? And third is how to integrate technology with appropriate pedagogical strategies? So let's start with the question when to use a technology tool at all? As opportunities for sophisticated ICT tools have increased tremendously, it has become very easy for instructional designers to incorporate a range of these technology tools or software in the design of their e-content. Designers should however first ask for the potential of the technology to contribute to student learning before investing the resources in development. One such example is shown from a study which questions the viability of using animations in multimedia and computer based instructions. Here the questions have been asked such as will animation be able to enhance computer based instruction? 
If not, what is the purpose that animation is serving? Is it cosmetic, getting attention or others? If yes, what is the function of animation in your instructional design? The point is that it is very important for an instructional designer to have a clear understanding about the fit of a particular technology for its purpose. Now given that there are so many technology tools available for a particular function, how to select a good tool? So the e-learning content can comprise of various learning elements including reading materials, videos, uh, simulation, educational games, assessment, uh, quizzes, teachable agents, adaptive systems. But uh, these different learning components are utilized for different purposes uh, like reading material is used when the concepts are uh, new or foreign, uh, videos are used when the concepts are um, abstract or complex, uh, simulations are used when uh, you want to make uh, invisible processes or elements uh, visible, uh, educational games can make learners understand the relevance of skills and so forth and so on. However, it should start with clearly defining the learning outcomes and then exploiting the functionality and affordances of the technology tools to answer if the tool is able to best achieve those learning outcomes. There is a set of criteria which can be used to analyze the technology affordances and if it best fits the purpose of the learning outcome. The analysis starts with listing down the features of the tool, understanding as to which instructional goals does it serve. Um, which teaching learning approaches will be suitable with this tool, uh, are there any guidelines to use this tool, uh, the use of the tool in assessment and any limitations uh, if there are. Here we will use example of simulation to show you how we can uh, analyze the affordances of a technology tool. Simulation for example is a computerized model uh, of a real life system or process uh, where specific activities may not be built into the system. Uh, learners can manipulate processes, variables to learn uh, how the system process works or it may also uh, show multiple representations of the process uh, like a graph, diagram, equations, etc. The instructional goal of a simulation can be to explore a new topic, uh, replace or supplement uh, lab work, uh, a supplement to field trip or role play. Simulation can be given as an individual or a group task. Uh, it can be used to introduce uh, a new lesson uh, by students having to play with it or it can be used to instigate a discussion. An important benefit of simulation is that uh, it helps make invisible processes, uh, concepts visible. For example, atoms, molecules, molecular reactions. Uh, it can speed up processes like how earthquake falls develop, uh, population growth or slow down processes like what happens when the ball is bounce, bounces off the floor. Uh, it can replace lab equipments if they are unavailable or they are expensive or they are unsafe. Uh, also allows the students to repeat with variations. While one of the limitations here is that we need to choose well designed simulations for accurate depiction of models which if not done appropriately can lead to misconceptions amongst learners. Also it can be time consuming to design such simulations. Hence it is very important to understand these affordances and limitations of technology before integrating them in our e-content. We will continue to discuss more about the integration of technology in e-content in our next LED. Thank you.